Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship. Yeah, we're so glad that you guys are here. Thanks for hopping online with us. We're beyond excited for the chance to hang out and worship with you. So go ahead and get comfy. Invite your crew, hit the share button, and don't forget to throw your city in the chat. We rep in Dallas over here, but we want y'all to represent too. Now we've got a great service plan for you guys, so let's get into it. Enjoy service. Enjoy. children, multiple youth just getting up over and over again to give their life to Christ. That is the biggest, best highlight. I'll be leading y'all in worship today. The altar is open. I noticed something a little bit different. I don't have my guitar because I prayed about what today was supposed to be. And the Lord said that he wants to release an undignified worship for you guys. So I'm gonna take my shoes off. This is holy ground. And let's just welcome in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Oh, 
their crowns before the king of glory and that the seraphim these angels circle him and they are shielding their eyes because he is so bright and so wonderful and so glorious and so I just want to take the time for us to close our eyes and think about how beautiful God is
can do anything Cause you're great and you're mighty You can do anything Cause you're great and you're mighty You can do anything Cause you're great and you're mighty You can do anything Cause you're great See, you can do anything, Father See, you can do anything faced the bear and then it died and then David faced the lion and then it died and then David came before Goliath and there are Goliaths that you guys are facing giants depression suicide insecurity shame pornography and so when we say these words we are prophesying in the name of Jesus that these giants have to come down in Jesus name so I want to enter into that one more time. I don't want you to think about who's around you. I want you to cast your crown before the king and say, first came the bear, then came the lion. One more time. Say, first came the bear, then came the lion. Down goes the giant. Down goes the giant. Cause you're great 
great. See, first came the bear. See, first came the bear, then came the lion. Down goes the giant. Down goes the giant. Spirit of fear, you have to bow. Cause first came the bear, then came the lion. Down goes the giant. Down goes the giant. Spirit of depression, you have to bow. Cause first came the bear, then came the lion. And down goes the giant. Down goes the giant. Sexual immorality, you have to bow. Cause first came the bear, then came the lion. And down goes the giant. Down goes the giant. See, you can do anything, Father. See, you can do anything. Cause you're great and you're mighty. You can do anything. Cause you're great and you're mighty. See, you can do anything. Cause you're great and you're mighty. You can do anything. Cause you're great. You are the other. 
performance pride our time father God so we just cast our crowns before you may the spirit of revelation of Jesus fall in this place in Jesus y'all this is like family I love y'all so much thank you for letting me come worship with you I pray that Jesus in continues to encounter you in this space and that the spirit of revelation falls 
so you can know that Jesus is the Son of God. There is nothing that he cannot do. So you can prophesy with your tongue that the giant has to come down. It doesn't matter what the giant is. It has to come down in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hello, Next Gen family, and thank you for joining us today for our Next Gen Youth service. Hey guys, did y'all enjoy that message from Mr. Ryan and Mr. Isaac last week? It was so good. We need a part two and three. If anyone has any questions regarding last week's topic on faith and sexuality, please send them into youth at ocbfchurch.org. We continue our series on faith this week, and our memory verse is Hebrews 11, verse 1. Faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. We can't wait to hear what God has to say about faith and what we need to do to operate in it. It's time for the real and next gen. Next gen Wednesday night lives. Are y'all coming out? Our Wednesday night lives are different each week. Summer Wednesday Night Lives will be full of surprises, so don't miss out. If you have not been coming out, this is your sign to come out and enjoy midweek service with your peers and have fun growing in your faith. Calling all youth, males and females, this is your time to shine. There is a model call happening on June 25th after service in the First Floor Youth Chapel. You must be a member of OCBF Church. Bring your best dress and lots of personality. Please see Ms. Natalie for more details. What's up, real man? We hope you have been having a great summer so far. We've seen some men already rocking their shirts and looking fresh. If you have not received your shirt, please see Mr. Ryan today. Ladylike mentees, we hope you all are enjoying reading and discussing our book of the year, Defined. Make sure you are all caught up on your chapters and check your mind for any and all updates. Let's remember to put our phones, earbuds, and other distractions away during our service time. Please remove all hoodies. We want to see your face. Let's give God the respect and honor that he deserves. If you need a Bible, please see a kingdom servant. Okay, Next Gen family, that's the real in Next Gen. Enjoy service. Bye. Bye. All right, so we have a few additional announcements in addition to those. So first of all, we have model call for In The Paint. So if you would like to be a model in, in, in The Paint and you like, you like to stretch your stuff and all of that, see us in the back today after service, June 25th. All right, next. If you're interested in joining Fuse, so Fuse is faithful, useful servants who are examples of Jesus. So we serve every Sunday. We're up here doing announcements, doing welcome, all of that. So if you would like to do that or just serve in general, please see Mr. Isaac after service. And those are the additional announcements. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? All right. It is offering time. Wednesday, June 21st was the first day of summer, summer, amen, amen. First official day of summer. Make this quick. Scripture to go along with that real quick that I want to just leave with you. One of my favorite scriptures, Genesis 8:22. It says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, hot and cold, summer and winter, night and day, it will continue forever. That first part, seed time and harvest, is what I wanted to just share with you. Just like we woke up this morning, last night we went to sleep, it was day, it was nighttime, we woke up this morning, it was daytime, right? Seed time and harvest will continue forever. So now is our opportunity to plant seed into the ground and we will expect God to give us a what? a increase, a harvest. Amen. Father, we thank you for those who gave, those who had a desire to give. We pray that you multiply these gifts. Blessed in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. here at KAA as a newly 18 year old man. And not only are we hyped, but we 
also been going deeper into the word. Like my life has been changed forever. Fellowship has been great. Games are amazing. And let's not get started on that pool because you know it's season. Hallelujah. <laughs> We thank God for a safe, fun, and most important of all, impactful trip at KAA. We're so grateful for all of us who were able to go, um, and we hope to continue to go in each year. But just for a quick moment, um, I want to have a few students share about their experience here at KAA. So I got Imani and Cardin. Y'all give it up for them. Okay. All right, y'all, my voice sounds terrible right now. And that is because we got extremely hyped at KAA this past week. Uh, that's why Fortray, Crunk is Cabin. Fortray! Big yeah. dudes. Boo. Big dudes. Hey, hey. All right, all right, that's all right, all right. All right. That's their that's they cabin signs, and they anyway. had a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, oh, no. <laughs> For all of you that are confused, um, K.A., <laughs> we have like, there's like an element of Greek life to it as well. So there's like a real bond between everybody and the people in their cabins. Like, we exchange numbers. I have people that I feel like I'm going to be friends with for a long, long time that I met at camp this past week. So, yeah, that's like the main experience of K.A., K -A, born, forming connections with your brothers and sisters in Christ from all across the country. Good, good, good. All right, Mr. Carden. Honestly, I'm surprised I still have my voice. <laughs> I was yelling a little bit too loud. Um, but no, I really like K. I feel like it was a, wouldn't say, uh, yeah, life-changing experience. I feel like that a lot of the things that I learned at K will last my entire lifetime. All right, y'all give it up for them. Thank y'all. Thank you. Okay, so I want to introduce our guest, really no guest, uh, speaker for today, uh, Mr. Henry. After, <laughs> okay, as you can as you can see, his wife is here, Miss Angel. <laughs> After years of attending church and participating in service opportunities, Henry Lucas became a follower of Christ within his first month of attending the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. At UAPB, God developed him as a leader, disciple, and man of God. He served in various ministries such as Baptist um, Collegiate Ministry, the Impact Movement, Camp Siloam, and Kids Across America. There you go. Can I get a KAA? -A? <laughs> With the latter being where he would meet his wife and the love of his life, Miss Angel. During those years, God made it evident that he would serve in the gospel ministry. Henry answered the Lord's call to vocational ministry in 2019. He first served as the interim youth minister at First Baptist Dumas in Dumas, Arizona. He served 
he later served at New Generation Church in Conway, where he served as youth and college pastor before answering God's call to Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, where he currently serves as the young adult coordinator in Dallas, Texas. Henry earned a Master of Theological Studies at Southwestern Baptist Theo Theological Seminary and is currently pursuing his Doctor of Educational Ministry. Will you all join me in giving a warm welcome to our brother, Henry Lucas. So this week, uh, I was telling my wife what I'm going to speak about. Um, you know, I'm all over the book. I'm in Revelation. I'm over here. I'm over there. She said, baby, you only got 25 minutes. So I'm not going to talk your head off. Uh, I'm going to say what God has said to me. We're going to get up out of here. Let us pray. Uh, we'll get into it. Uh, Father, we love you. God, thank you for waking up this morning, waking us up this morning, allow us to worship you uh, with the brothers and sisters. God, we ask that you will have your way. God, we thank you for your spirit. Lord, we ask that you would teach us, convict us, encourage us, whatever you want to do in this time. We ask that you be glorified and meet with us right now. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So quickly, I want to thank the Next Gen team just for allowing me to be a part of what God is doing here. Thank y'all for encouraging me, praying for me um, when I mess up, giving me grace. Um, thank y'all so much for my wife and my family. Thank y'all for coming to support me. Y'all could have been over there hearing Dr. Tony Evans. That's where I would have been at. But y'all came to hear me. Um, so this month's theme, Ms. Versi, I'm going to move a little bit. I'm going to be right here in the middle, though. Uh, this month's theme is building your faith. Mr. Isaac, Mr. Ryan have been telling y'all all about this, right? But when I was y'all age, I thought I was building my faith. I was going to church, getting baptized, serving. Y'all heard I was serving opportunities. I didn't have a relationship with Christ. So my mom had a relationship with God. My dad had a relationship with God. I found out that I was hanging on to their coattails, as we're going to read about somebody in this story. So maybe that's you this morning. But I'm going to share a little personal story. You can laugh, but just, just don't talk bad about me. So this the uh, late, late 2000s, early 2010s. If you was keeping up with rap music, you know Lil Wayne was popping. He could not miss on an album, on a song, on a mixtape. And I was a big Lil Wayne fan. So my, my uh, best friend, he had a, a cousin. I'm not going to say his name. They're probably watching this. We was all Lil Wayne fans, but Lil Wayne, real blood. If you know gang culture, you know they red, they wear the red bandana, all that. They be in the streets. So my, cousin, my uh, best friend cousin, he claimed blood gang too. So I said, well, Lil Wayne a blood. My best friend cousin is a blood, so let me go ahead and get me a red bandana too. So I probably went to Dollar, Dollar General, uh, Walmart, somewhere. I done went and got me a red bandana. So I got it in Arkansas now. I'm in a mirror. I put my red bandana on, listen to Lil Wayne. I'm lit. I'm ready. So I walk outside. Red bandana on now. I'm blood gang. Walk outside. Soon as I walk outside, I see two dudes walking down the street. Y'all know what I did? I'll walk right back up in the house. So, if you want to count this as being in the game, it was only for a few minutes. So I shared it because, as funny as it may be, not only was that, you know, my personal gang or whatever, but it trickled on to my spiritual life. So not only was I false claiming blood, but I was false claiming Jesus Christ. I had the, the flag, but I wasn't a part of the gang. I had the jersey, but I wasn't a part of the team. Maybe this is you this morning, because I can't assume as great as a ministry as this is that everybody here is, are followers of Jesus Christ. But I want to give you hope, because look at where God has brought me now. He's allowed me to be sealed with his spirit, allowed me to be a godly man, a godly husband. That's by God's grace. So if he could do it for me, he could do it for you too. So for the believers in here, I'm going to encourage you through the word of God, whether you're being obedient, even if you're being disobedient, I want to encourage you still. 
and for unbelievers, I want to give you the hope that we have in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if you have your word, your Bible, meet me in Acts chapter 19, verse 11 and 12. So I'm going to read this, but before we start reading, I want you to know that Paul, the Apostle Paul, uh, was first Saul, so he was persecuting Christians. God saved him on a Damascus road. Now he is all in with following Christ, all in to the point where he will later die for being a follower of Jesus. In verse 10, Miss Versa, you don't have to put this up. I'm going to just read this before I read that. It says that this took place for two years so that all who lived in Asia heard the word of the Lord both Jews and Greeks. So Paul had been teaching the word, preaching the word, preaching the gospel. They didn't been hearing about Jesus. Now y'all ain't going to believe what happened next. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. <laughs> so it's verse 11, and I'm going to read down. God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul so that handkerchiefs or aprons were even carried from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out. But also, somebody say also. Also. Some of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place attempted to name over those who had the evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, I adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Not the Jesus that I know, not the Jesus that I preach, Jesus that Paul preaches. Let's continue. Seven sons. We was at K.A., y'all say seven count them, but it's just seven of them. Sons of one Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. And an evil spirit answered and said to them, check this out, y'all. I recognize Jesus, the Son of God. And I know about Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. But who are you? And the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them and subdued all of them and overpowered them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. They weren't just naked. They weren't just wounded. They was both of them. (laughs) This became known to all, both Jews and Greeks, because remember, they had been hearing the word of the Lord for them two years, who lived in Ephesus And fear fell upon them as the name of the Lord Jesus was being magnified. Praise the Lord. Many also of those who had believed, they kept coming, confessing, and disclosing their practices. And many of those who practiced magic brought their books together and began burning them in the sight of everyone. And they counted up the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. This last verse, please don't go to sleep on me. So the word of the Lord was growing mightily and prevailing. We're going to pray real quick, then I'm going to get into it. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your word. Thank you that it's true. God, whatever you want to stand out, allow it to stand out. For the believer, encourage them. Unbeliever, please draw them to yourself. We love you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so think about this. We got all these diseases, diseases in the world. We got COVID-19, cancer, HIV, AIDS, schizophrenia, mental, physical, all these diseases. Let's just think about if I took my shoe off. They knew. They don't stink. Okay. Can you grab that for me? Let's say she had COVID-19. You don't, God forbid, she don't got COVID-19. She's healthy, y'all. So you know when we had COVID, COVID first came out, you had to get a vaccine. Uh, You had to put your mask on. You had to keep your distance. Well, you can give me my shoe back. Thank you so much. Let's say she had COVID-19, and now she done took this shoe, and now she ain't got COVID-19 no more. Instead of being positive, she's now negative. Let's say she had an evil spirit. God forbid she have an evil spirit, and that evil spirit would have left her. So God was doing extraordinary things by the hands of Paul, things that we can't even imagine. Man, I had to get a vaccine. I had to get all this stuff. She had COVID. All she did was touch a piece of clothing, and now she's fully healed. I think y'all missing it. She was fully healed, not only physically from her illness, but spiritually and mentally. You said it right there from the evil spirits that she had. So think about this happening. Think about people in your family who, who may have cancer, who may have uh, STD, who may have whatever they have, high blood pressure, uh, hypertension, all that stuff. They run in my family. Let's say all you had to do was touch Paul and you were healed. All this stuff is going on, and God is using Paul in an extraordinary way. So this is what I, say, this is what I want to say to the believers. Man, we went to KA this week. You done got refreshed. 
Some people don't like this word. You've been revived. God met you where you were. God has saved you just like he saved Paul, who was first saw, just like he saved us. You know what I'm saying? You know how it is. We was out there doing our own thing in the streets. But now God has saved you. I want to encourage you to let your life count. I had a mentor. I have a mentor. His name is Bill Elif. He goes all around the world leading people to revival. And revival in this sense is experiencing the presence of God. Really, you're just praying. You're praying, and now you're experiencing God. You're being fresh and renewed. What's going to matter 10 years from now? Anybody? Can anybody tell me what's going to matter 10 years from now? Okay. What's going to matter 100 years from now? We got any LeBron fans, Kobe, Michael Jordan fans? Anybody? Anybody watch basketball? She watched volleyball. Who, uh, who good in volleyball? You, do you know? De La Cruz? Okay, thank you, my sister. Okay, think about this. Whatever sports you like, whatever sport you rock with, 100 years from now, we probably gonna be dead. 100 years from now, we not gonna care if Michael Jordan had six rings, if Kobe had five, LeBron had four, we ain't gonna care how far of a shot Steph Curry made 100 years from now. But you know, if we're dead, what's going to matter? If we trusted in Christ. And not only if we trusted in Christ, but what we did with the salvation that he gave us. So I want to encourage you, just like how God used Paul, let your life count for something. And when I say count for something, I mean the Great Commission. Making disciples. Obeying God's word. And teaching others to do the same. Because it's, it's hard out here. My wife, she'll tell you, this, this month has been, it's been spiritual warfare like... I've never seen it. I don't know if it's because I'm in Dallas or because I'm at OCBF or what's going on, but it's been rough out here for a brother. But you know who's, why I have hope? Because of God. So stay close to him, continue to abide, and you're going to be all right. And your life going to count for something 100 years from now. Okay, now... That's for the believers. And when I'm, I'm not, this is not personal. As I talk to people who may not know Jesus this morning. Okay, it is personal. <laughs> but it's not personal in a way where I'm mad at you. It's personal because I've been there. Like I'm telling you, every Sunday, putting church clothes on. Like, not this, like, cardigans, uh, gators, like, church clothes. Hearing the word of God, knowing the church language, knowing what Christians say in public, don't say in public. I learned it all because I watched. So if the pastor is saying this, well, I'm going to say what my pastor is saying. If he's not saying this, well, I'm not going to say that, at least not around people in my church. But when it's my own thing, I'm going to do my own thing. So I want to talk to you because this guy is seven sons of Sceva. They were exorcists. So that means people who had evil spirits, they would get the evil spirits out of them. It's layered, so follow me. Please follow me. Their father was a high priest. So this means he was essentially a pastor to the Israelites. He was the only one that could go to the most holy place and uh, provide sin offerings for the people. So his they daddy had it going on. He had it going on. He was all that in a bag of chips. Not only was that the case, Exodus high priest, but they saw Paul, someone who was the same ethnicity as them, who was an Israelite, Israelite like them. And they seeing all this stuff. And they're saying, man, Paul doing it, let me do it too. So they're saying, by the name of Jesus that Paul preaches, not the Jesus that they know. So you may be coming to Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, serving with Mr. Ryan, serving with Mr. Isaac, killing it, and everybody's seeing you as this Christ follower, but do you really know Jesus? Not what are you doing for him. 
Do you know him intimately? Let's go back to the book. Let's go back to the book because I want to read you this verse. The evil spirit answered and said to them, I recognize Jesus and I know about Paul, but who are you? Okay. Jesus is the son of God. So when he was casting out demons, the demons realized he ain't the one. Well, he is the one, but he ain't the one I want to mess with. Paul was an apostle. He had the power of the Holy Spirit. He was casting out demons out of people. And they came out immediately. So they knew about Jesus. They knew about Paul. But they didn't know about these dudes. Even though they said the name of Jesus, even though their uh, dad had a religious position, some type of faith, and even though they had a, essentially a position in ministry, let's call it deliverance ministry because they were trying to cast out demons. They had all this stuff going on. And the demons didn't know them. So let's say, y'all remember when I told y'all I was uh, in a game for a few minutes. So I would have had the cover, if I'm false claiming, I don't have the covering of blood, the game. But not only do I not have the covering of blood, but if there's any rob, let's say them two dudes was Crips. It's raps. Good game, buddy. I don't have protection of the bloods, and the Crips don't like me. So these guys claim to know Jesus. They didn't have the covering of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they had no power, no authority over evil spirits. Good game, buddy. You have no help in this world whatsoever. So y'all see the next part. The, the evil spirit in a man overpowered them and took over them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uncle Comus, can you come in real quick? This is my uncle, y'all. Say hey to him. Okay, this is my uncle Comus, Comus Saints, Dr. Comus Saints. Put some respect on his name. Now think about this. Let's say we got seven young men. They work out all the time. They intelligent. They smart. One man overpowered all of them who had the evil spirit. Thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) Now, nobody out the friend group, nobody out the squad could have been like, hey, hey, y'all. Hey, bros. This, This may not be a good idea. Nobody in the friend group had discernment. The reason you, you're an unbeliever because you're an unbeliever. But the reason you may be stuck there is because of the people you hanging around. And the music y'all listening to ain't got nothing to do about nothing. That's going to matter 100 years from now. The stuff you watching ain't going to matter 100 years from now. So y'all doing your thing, you do, y'all doing your TikTok dance, and you have no spiritual authority, and all of y'all getting overpowered by evil spirits, by the agendas of the culture. Nobody has power. So is this you this morning? You don't have hope in Christ. All your friends, all y'all out here getting overpowered by evil spirits. And you have no spiritual authority. But also, you may not have an identity. Because if your hope is not in Christ, who rose from the grave, then no matter if, how good you are at basketball, how attractive you are, none of that stuff matter. When I was in high school and I was false claiming Jesus, the girls, I realized, no matter how popping you were for a season, no matter how much juice you had, when somebody else had the juice, so what now? No matter how good I was at sports or how good I thought I was, those recruiters, they looking for the next best thing. So I thought I was a basketball, football player who got a lot of girls. But when all this stuff left me, I had no identity. Who was I? Who are you? You can be somebody in Christ. Okay, let's move on real quick. So this last part, all this stuff was happening. Now, the people that was hearing the word of Paul, mm, imagine 
hearing the gospel, hearing the word for over a two-year period of time. You hearing it, but now you seeing all this stuff really happening. Oh, Jesus was really real? The power of the Holy Spirit, that was a, really a thing? Now everybody's scared. They scared. They don't know what's going on. But now they're ready to make it right with Jesus. So it says, 18, no, 17, this became known to all, both Jews and Greeks, who lived in Ephesus, and fear fell upon all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was being magnified. 18, many also of those who had believed, they kept coming, confessing, and disclosing their practice. So if you don't know Jesus this morning, eternal life is free. I had to realize that I was a sinful person. No matter how many years I went to church, no matter how many good things I did in my own eyes, none of it was good enough to work my way to him. But what he did is he worked his way to us. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, took on human flesh, fully God, fully man, lived the perfect life that none of us could ever dream of living. And then he died. On the cross. Y'all saw the cross talk. And he rose from the grave with all power and authority. And now he's ascended on the right hand of the Father. This is the good news that we have, that we cannot defeat sin. We cannot defeat death. We cannot defeat hell. But Jesus did. So if you want to accept that today, I know Mr. Isaac is going to do an altar call. Please, please trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. Trusting in Jesus was the best thing I ever did, ever. And I did some cool things in my life, like marrying my wife, Angel. Don't, please don't boost her head up too much. Trusting in Jesus is the best decision you can ever make. And if you don't know him, get to know him today, okay? All right, we got two more verses, and I'm going to wrap up. I'm sorry. Okay, verse 19. And many of those who practice magic brought their books together and began burning them in the sight of everyone. And they counted up the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord was growing mightily, mightily and prevailing. So let's say... You've trusted in Jesus, right? You trusted in Christ. You didn't been baptized. You know, you was walking the Christian life out, but you stumbled along the way. Maybe it's, they were practicing magic. Maybe you out here practicing magic. Maybe you've been struggling with horoscopes. Instead of reading what God wanted to do with your life through the word, you seeing what Scorpio and uh, Virgo and all them uh, want to lead, lead your life. I don't mean no harm. I'm just saying it's in the book. Maybe you're struggling with sin, premarital sex, pornography. You out here stealing out the stoves. I don't know your story, but God know. And just like it's hope for them, there's hope for you. Um, word says, First John, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Yes, no matter how much sin you've been doing as a believer, there's hope for you. There's grace for you in Jesus. When they confessed and they repented, they came back to God. I want y'all to really see this, and, and we're going to get ready to close Yes, sir, my brother. <laughs> they confessed. This means they, they were open about it. They agreed with God, but what they were doing was wrong. It wasn't just, God, I'm sorry, and I'm going on about my life. It's, God, I, I've sinned against a holy and righteous God. I fell short of his commandments, of his word, and God, I'm returning. But they didn't just stop there. Do y'all see where it said 50,000 pieces of silver? They burned all that up because there's a cost to following Jesus. 
he didn't die for a little part of you, right? right? Like, think about a house. He didn't, he didn't die for just every room, and he, and he uh, you said it, you said it. And he said, you keep the bathroom. He want all the rooms, every single last one of them. So if you're struggling with sin, today is the day to make things right with God. My wife know I be in my head about stuff. Like, baby, you think, what you think I need to do about this? Whole time I'm hearing what the Holy Spirit is wanting me to do. He's wanting you to make something right with him. Not to embarrass you, but so you can get back to fellowship with him, which is the best thing ever. Man, I confess, I've been confessing for, I don't know. No, it's been recent, though. I had to confess my sins to some people. Man, Rihanna up here singing, bro. Man, DeSante, where DeSante at? DeSante up in here? Man, I'm over there. You're worthy of me. Boy, I'm crying. Because I've returned to my first love. And I can enjoy him. And he's been waiting to enjoy me in a relationship. So for the believer, and you are out here obeying God, continue obeying because your life matters. No matter if you a teenager, no matter if you finna go off to college, no matter if you a young adult, 18 to 40, no matter if you a little older than that, I'm, you good this way. Keep obeying God because obedience is the best thing that you could do as a follower of Christ. For the believer, you struggling with sin, agree with God with what you're doing is wrong. And if you gotta sacrifice some things like they sacrifice, Getting rid of TikTok, taking it off your phone because you be on there like half the day. Oh. I, I went there. <laughs> Getting rid of something, I don't know. That's between you and God. But for the unbeliever, would you come to follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who wants to give you hope, who wants to seal you with the Spirit of God, and wants to give you purpose? that's actually going to matter 100 years from now. You don't have to be out here false claiming Jesus. You could be a part of the team. You could be a part of the family and experience his goodness. So I'm going to pray because I'm negative 30 seconds behind and we're going to get up out of here. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace, and we thank you for your mercy. Help us, please, God, build our faith in a way that's pleasing in your sight. Help us depend on the power of the Holy Spirit and rely on you. Here are our lives. Use them as you see fit. For the lost, God, we ask that you would save them. We ask that you would convict them and bring them into your family. We thank you, and we praise you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, that was some good word right there. For real. I know I'm ready to put it into action in my life, and we want to encourage you to do the same. Yeah, there were so many gems in that message. So take what stood out to you and see how you can apply it into your life this week. Justice, can you pray for us? Yes. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for bringing us all here today to receive this amazing message. I pray that we apply it in our lives throughout this week and share it with others. Dear Lord Jesus, if we go through any trials and tribulations this week, I pray that we give it all to you and that you order our footsteps and walk with us, dear Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Make sure you log on next week at 11 a.m. Central. We can't wait to see you next time. Till then, have a great week. God bless. Bye.